And when it comes to hurricanes, water. Water is dangerous, period. From coastal storm surge to inland flooding, the majority of the state of Florida is in Ian's crosshairs. Therefore, I would like to just share a few key safety messages that will help keep you and your family safe. First, never drive through standing or moving water as it takes only a few inches of water to carry away a vehicle. Second, if you are taking shelter in an area with rising water levels, quickly find higher ground. And third, never operate a generator in your home. Too many lives are lost each year due to carbon monoxide poisoning, and it's incredibly important that you only run generators outdoors. So now I'll give a brief update, operational update, on the interagency personnel, commodities, and resources that we have deployed to support this response. As I said yesterday, search and rescue remains a top priority. Our search and rescue coordination teams remain staged in Miami to include teams from our FEMA Urban Search and Rescue Program, the Coast Guard, CBP, the Department of Defense, the Department of the Interior, and the State of Florida. These teams will coordinate search and rescue efforts by land, air, and sea. We have 128,000 gallons of fuel uh, remained ready for rapid deployment. We have moved in a variety of generators of all sizes and types to restore power to critical infrastructure and medical facilities as needed. The Army Corps of Engineers is pre-staging 350 personnel to conduct power and fuel assessments as soon as the storm passes. And just yesterday, I spoke with the President and CEO of the American Public Power Association to discuss some of their emergency preparedness actions and the mutual aid agreements that they have in place. We have 3.7 million meals and 3.5 million liters of water staged in Alabama, and there are multiple volunteer agencies that are staged and prepared to perform feeding operations as soon as it is safe to do so. We have provided Florida with 300 ambulances as well as expert federal medical teams. These are the same teams, um, the same brave first responders um, that we use to help communities during COVID-19. We are also tracking medical needs across Florida's hospitals, adult care facilities, and dialysis centers, both for facilities that have evacuated, but more importantly, for those that have not. And finally, as I told the president yesterday, this level of interagency coordination will not stop as we prepare for the historic and the catastrophic impacts that we are already beginning to see. So now with every emergency response, we would not be successful in meeting our mission without our partners at the American Red Cross. The Red Cross has done an incredible amount of work in preparation for Hurricane Ian, and it is my pleasure to welcome the American Red Cross CEO, Gail McGovern. Thank you so much, Administrator Criswell, uh, for inviting me to join you. Um, and uh, FEMA and the Weather Service are wonderful partners, and I want to thank you both. On behalf of the American Red Cross, our hearts are with everyone that's in the path of Hurricane Ian. Please listen to your local officials. Evacuate if they tell you to do so. Grab your medication, your glasses, your important documents, prescription drugs, and the like. Check on your neighbors, and please don't wait out the storm if you're being told to evacuate. It's dangerous. We're working closely with our partners and local officials in the affected communities to make sure they have the help that they need. Since last week, the American Red Cross has been moving hundreds of trained volunteers from across the country and tens of thousands of relief supplies to Florida in preparation for Ian. Everyone's safety is our top concern. We have dedicated and very compassionate teams of experienced Red Cross leaders in Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, and North Carolina. They're in contact with state, local, and tribal officials, and we will be ready to support the evacuation centers. As of this morning, staged in Florida, we have nearly 500 Red Cross responders and shelter supplies for 60,000 people. 
Those Red Cross teams have been responding to the request from local government to equip and open evacuation centers, and they're preparing now to deliver critical relief after the hurricane passes. After landfall, by the end of this weekend, over 2,500 Red Cross responders will be deployed to Florida and other affected states. We'll work with our government and nonprofit partners and provide shelter, food, emergency supplies, care, comfort, and hope to the tens of thousands of people in the path of the hurricane. Also, if people want to help their neighbors, we can always use local volunteers. Just go to our website, redcross.org. And there are a lot of ways to find where there are safe shelters. Anyone who needs a safe place can go to find information for open Red Cross shelters at our website, redcross.org. Or you can use our free Red Cross emergency app, uh, and you can call 1-800-RED-CROSS. Just make sure you're following the instructions of the officials. And you can also find shelters at floridadisaster.org. And finally, to everyone in the path of the storm, please, please, please follow the evacuation instructions from your elected officials and your local officials. We know that for many of you, recovery from Hurricane Ian will likely be a very long road, and your American Red Cross will be there. And if you'd like to help us, you can volunteer, you can donate blood, or you can make a financial donation by going to redcross.org. And no donation is too small. They're all deeply appreciated. And everything that the Red Cross does is because of the generosity of the American public. Thank you. Thank you very much, Gail. Now I'd like to turn to Director Graham from the National Weather Service to talk about what he's doing to support the response. Thank you, Administrator Chris. Well, appreciate that. And, um, you know, we're uh, watching the storm closely, uh, of course. It's a very historic um, storm as we look at this. So I just appreciate the relationship and the coordination with FEMA and also the, the, the state. Uh, the, the county, the local, and also uh, the federal level, all the emergency managers. So there's been coordination, uh, briefings behind the scenes, talking about this storm for the last week, and we just appreciate that, that relationship. <clears throat> I actually literally have my phone up here because things keep changing as we speak with a storm like this. It's very common, so I'll be able to bring you the, the latest um, information right up here. Well, I wish this wasn't a forecast that, that I had to deliver. Um, you know, you really look at this. I wish, wish this wasn't a forecast that, that's about to come true. Okay, so this is a devastating storm for parts of uh, Florida, not just on the, the southwest coast, but also inland associated with some of these impacts. This is going to be a storm we talk about for many years to come. It's a historic event. So the impacts are already underway. Already starting to see some of those, uh, those squalls getting into, uh, into Florida. And we're already uh, we're throwing everything at it at, at NOAA. Everything from the satellites, radar, we've had extra balloon releases across the country. Think about the Midwest. Think about the Northwest United States, the Weather Service Forecast Office, launching extra balloons so we get that data into the models to try to get everything we can into the models to, to make these forecasts. Hurricane hunters from the Air Force and NOAA have constantly been in the storm, often at the same time getting us the data that we need, and some of these updates that we've been giving you this morning have, has come from the data that we get from the, the hurricane hunters. And I would be remiss if I didn't say, I, I just want to say this real clear, what heroes, right? They go in towards the storm so we can get everybody away from the storm. So just real heroes flying into there, both the NOAA hurricane hunters and the Air Force hurricane hunters. Um, just absolutely uh, amazing work from these heroes. Winds are 155 miles an hour. Category 4 storm. The radii, hurricane force winds go out 35 miles from the center. It's so important not to just focus on that center line, right? It's big. 35 miles away from the center, you have those hurricane force winds. Think about this, 150 miles away from the center, you have tropical storm force winds. So it's not just right there in the center, right? It, it's a bigger um, impact from, from all of this. And the storm is slowing down as forecast. And that's going to compound the issues associated with storm surge and compound the issues associated with, with the rainfall. 
So real important, uh, you heard the advice already here, have those plans in place if you're in Southwest Florida, you know, that the time is to, to, to be safe and be where you are and other places, um, you know, the central part of the state and the Northwest is just the, the West Coast, even the East Coast of Florida is gonna see some storm surge and some winds as this takes the time to move across the state. Slow, so it's gonna take 24, 24 hours or so once it makes landfall to make it to the other side of the state across the peninsula. So it's 24 hours of rainfall, 24 hours of wind pushing the water, that's 24 hours um, that you'll see some impacts associated with this. We already heard it, Administrator Chriswell, we've talked about this for years, and it's true, water. We have to talk about the water. 90% of your fatalities in these tropical systems comes from the water. It's a storm surge, it's the rain, not just on the coast, but also inland. So we have to talk about it, life-threatening devastating storm surge forecast. Okay, this is the brand new information over the last hour or so. Think about some of these values. Um, middle long boat um, to Inglewood, six to 10 feet. Inglewood to Bonita Beach, 12 to 18 feet storm surge. That's above ground. That's up your pant leg. That's a lot of water. That's a dangerous, life-threatening amount of storm surge, okay? Bonita Beach to Chokoloski, eight to 12 foot of storm surge. So these communities along the coast, it's an incredibly dangerous situation. Rainfall, um, not just along the coast, but inland. Think about these values that we're forecasting. Widespread 10 to 15 inches, 15 to 20 inches. Some place is gonna get two feet of rain. It's moving that slow. And that rain has a tough time draining because the storm surge has it blocked. So the water. People really need to be, listen to the warnings, have multiple ways to get um, information and warnings as the water's gonna be incredibly dangerous. The wind as well, and we talk about the, the leading cause of fatalities being water, but when you have a category four storm like this around that eye wall, devastating amount of damage right around that eye wall. So structural damage, uh, power lines, uh, trees, and uh, some serious damage right around that, that eye wall. And tornadoes, if there wasn't enough threats, we still have tornadoes. 90% of your tornadoes are on that right front quadrant. So as we follow this storm in, the right front quadrant's where you get 90% of the tornadoes. So everybody really urging you to stand by for some of those warnings um, as, as they get issued. So that's it. There's an incredible amount of information. It's coming. And I, the one last thing I want to mention, even getting through the storm, it's dangerous afterwards. It's no fun after these storms, okay? There's debris. There's, you know, you think about trees, power lines, and uh, please be careful with the generators. We've seen over the last couple years in, in some of these big hurricanes, including Hurricane Laura that hit Louisiana, that there were more fatalities afterwards associated with generators than there was from a similar storm surge of, of 16 to 18 feet. So I'm just urging everyone, please follow those instructions and, and really be careful um, after the fact. So anyway, I, that's, that's all I have. Administrator Chris Well, you know, I just appreciate the partnership. We're all in this together. We're all trying to make the country weather and climate ready and uh, together we're, we're able to do it. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Graham. All right, so we've just been uh, listening to FEMA um, update uh, everyone on the current situation on the ground and also the resources that are being put in place to help people after the uh, hurricane passes through. Uh, we're hoping to hear from uh, Governor Ron DeSantis as well, and as soon as he takes to uh, the podium, uh, we will bring that to you in the meantime, though. All right, uh, let's get you now to Tampa, Florida, where Chris Van Cleve is covering the storm for CBS News. Uh, Chris, since the last time we spoke to you, uh, it started to rain. Vlad, that was the uh, sobering words there from the National Weather Service. If you think about when they say life-threatening, devastating conditions, you talk about storm surge. I'm about six feet tall. This is about 10 feet tall. You're talking about water eight feet above that, a wall of water coming on shore to places in the Fort Myers area. That's not survivable for some people that stayed in, this, in the evacuation area. We're in an evacuation area here. We're not going to see water like that, though we could see four to six feet of storm surge, two feet of rain on top of it. This is a devastating storm. It has the potential to be destructive not only to property, but to people. And that is why people are so concerned. Yes, we are getting rain and some bands of, of strong wind gusts here in Tampa right now. That's nice. gonna get worse as, as Ian moves up. Uh, and, and of course, 
uh, you know, you're seeing people milling around here. That will stop as these conditions worsen. Uh, right now here in the Tampa area, they are waiting for the worst to come across Florida. More than 50,000 people are in the dark. And of course, that number is going to rise as well. There are a lot of resources staged as soon as conditions improve to start making repairs. Nearly 30,000 power crews. We passed a bunch of them in the Orlando area. Just truck after truck after truck after truck parked and staged. Some 5,000 Florida National Guard, 2,000 National Guard from surrounding states ready to deploy as soon as conditions improve. But for right now, it is... Uh, time to brace yourself because the particularly for people south of our location the, the time to move is running out and for people here they're just waiting for what Ian is, is going to bring. Uh, Chris, uh, you know, as you say, these are sobering words that we're hearing from FEMA. Uh, this is a once in a lifetime storm. Most people, in fact, I would surmise that no one has ever seen something like this in the area where you are right now, the Tampa area. Um, in the last couple of hours, we did see some people around you that were still, you know, getting things done, walking their dogs, shopping. Um, is there a sense from you that people have evacuated or are there a lot of people that have chosen to ride this out? Uh, about 2.5 million Floridians heated evacuation orders across about eight counties. That's not everybody. There's some folks over here tying a boat down, for example. Um, and we know that there are folks around. You know, we, we were able to eat in a restaurant last night here in the evacuation area. So some folks have decided to ride it out. That always happens. I was talking to uh, some people in, in the Sarasota area that uh, they have a hurricane hardened home and they, they feel like they're far enough back from the, the storm surge where they decided to stay. There will be people who do that. And in a, a Governor DeSantis earlier today touched on this very point. We've got some sound we can play from the governor. A storm of this magnitude will produce catastrophic flooding and life-threatening storm surge on the Gulf Coast of Florida. Uh, and the highest risk areas are ranging from Collier County uh, up to Sarasota County. The current track uh, has the storm making landfall in Charlotte County. If you are in any of those counties, uh, it's no longer possible to safely evacuate. Uh, it's time to hunker down and prepare for this storm. Uh, this is a powerful storm that should be treated like you would treat if a tornado was approaching uh, your home. Uh, this morning we were talking to the sheriff here in the Tampa area, Hillsborough County, and he said once they see sustained winds pushing 40 miles an hour, you're going to see uh, EMS, ambulances and fire trucks come off the roads. When it gets to 45 to 50 miles an hour, he has to pull his troopers, his deputies, off the roads, which means there's going to be a period of this storm up and down the Gulf Coast of Florida where help isn't going to come, where first responders simply can't risk themselves to come help other people. That's what Governor DeSantis was talking about there for folks in Naples and Fort Myers and Sarasota. That moment of time is getting close. It is close at hand. For us up here in the Tampa area, it's probably a few hours away before we see that happen. But it is going to get worse, and it is going to potentially uh, turn into a storm where people lose their lives, where people lose their homes because of what Ian's fury will bring ashore. All right, Chris, thank you very much. So we want to bring in Felicia Combs now, meteorologist with the Weather Channel. Uh, Felicia, you are in Key West. I can see the winds whipping up there as well. Uh, tell us a bit about what you're seeing there. Yeah, it's still very windy here, not nearly as windy as it was last night as Ian was passing just to the west of us. But we've still had the sustained winds up around 30 miles an hour. We've had hurricane force gusts overnight and early this morning. And what we're primarily concerned with now as we move toward the noon hour is a secondary surge of storm surge flooding as we approach high tide. We've really seen uh, the tidal cycle play a big role in the flooding that we're seeing here in Key West. I want to give you a great example of this and, and what we're seeing. So we're approaching high tide. I want you to, number one, first notice where this water is coming from. If you look out this way, you're looking out toward uh, a little bit farther west, it'd be the Gulf, a little bit farther south, it would be the, the Straits of Florida. And you can see the water, the, just the ripples in the water, how it's being pushed inland from that. But Matt, if you uh, kind of swing around there, I want them to see the water mark on the building. So last night you could see the water. This whole street was covered in water. And what you're looking at is the water mark on this building here. Uh, and that's how high the was covered. 
this whole street. So uh, we definitely uh, have seen some of that flooding recede, but again, it is coming back as we see the second high tide cycle. Now the high tide is supposed to be around noon again. Now for today, the main concern is especially the Gulf side with those winds coming in at a more westerly or west southwesterly direction. That storm surge warning lasting here in the lower keys. Of course, we've still got the winds. We've still got power outages as well. So while people are out surveying the damage, trying to figure out what they can do to clean up and start to get back to normal here, the weather is still continuing to impede that. When we were driving around the island this morning, we saw trees down. We saw a ton of debris and limbs down. We have some power lines down just around us. So thousands of people still without power. So we've got a ways to go here before we're completely done with the impacts from Ian. The thing about the storm surge as well, because we're dealing with astronomically high tides from that new moon that we just had, that's meaning we're seeing above average tidal cycles anyways. So it's bringing us those issues. Guys, back to you. All right, Felicia Combs, thank you very much. Stay safe where you are. We that, appreciate it. That was such a Key West moment when those people bicycled past her yeah. in the background. Yeah, for sure. It's a hurricane. It's a hurricane, folks. <laughs> uh, we're going to have a lot more on that hurricane. Uh, a little later, we're going to check in with Jim Cantore from the Weather Channel. He'll have more on that. Uh, but after the break, we'll get you caught up on some of the other big stories that we are following this morning, including news from the highest profile trial in the January 6th investigation. Our Scott McFarland has the details. You're streaming CBS News.